Recycled plastic is going mainstream in disc golf. Companies like Trash Panda and Ocean Discs are pushing the limits of what recycled plastic can do. While other companies like MVP, Latitude 64, and Innova have been producing some type of recycled plastic for years now. And now Discraft is seeing the benefits of producing its own version of recycled plastic. So with all these options available, what, if any, difference in flight do you see from throwing recycled plastic? And does it vary from brand to brand? Let's find out, because the plastic is in the details. Hey everyone, it's Greg from Six Sided Discs. It's spring here in Ohio, and that means tournaments are back in action. Plastic is flying off the shelf, and we here at Six Sided Discs need to keep plastic flying onto our shelf to keep up. And while I was ordering some of that new plastic to refill our shelves, I discovered something interesting on Discraft's order form, a new line of recycled ESP plastic. Now, Discraft says this new recycled line is produced from scrapped ESP discs, and many still carry the iconic swirls of standard ESP plastic. But Discraft's entry into this recycled plastic space raises some interesting questions. Firstly, we've thrown a lot of different recycled plastic, from discs that are made entirely out of recycled plastic, like Trash Panda or Ocean Discs. We've also thrown recycled plastic from Latitude 64 and MVP and compared that to other premium blends. Most recently, we threw a recycled BioGold Ballista Pro from Latitude 64 and compared that to a standard premium Gold Ballista Pro. And it's safe to say that it flew a little bit differently. We also threw a few MVP discs last year in R2 Neutron plastic. And oftentimes we found that they were also quite a bit more understable like this R2 Neutron Crave next to a standard Neutron Crave. And from what we've seen and heard of Echo Star from Innova, that trend continues in being much more understable than the other plastics they offer. So the big question is, will that hold true for Discraft's recycled ESP? Well, to help us figure that out, we have seven different molds in the new recycled plastic to test and compare to other Discraft plastics. Now, one quick thing to note about these recycled ESP plastics is that they do feel, I think, a little bit stiffer than standard ESP plastic. And interestingly, much more lightweight. I'm surprised that there's that combination. Usually lightweight plastic feels more flexible. And because they're so lightweight, we're gonna make sure to mention all the weights of the discs that we're testing today. As usual, we have Team Six Sided Discs, Caleb Thomas throwing for us. And we also have one of our local pals, Jeremy, who just happened to be playing around at the course today when we were recording. Big thanks to both of them. And it's also worth mentioning we had a bit of a steady tailwind today around 10 miles an hour. So I'm going to ask both of them to up the power a little bit so we can see what they might fly like in normal wind conditions. Let's start with our fastest disc and work our way back down, beginning with the Thrasher. The Thrasher is a high-speed, beginner-friendly driver that typically gets plenty of turn and, even in more overstable blends, can be a distance bomber for faster arm speeds. Just watch Missy Gannon throw it all the time on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. Our recycled ESP Thrasher is 155 to 159 grams, and we'll be comparing that to this 157 gram Z Light Thrasher. The recycled Thrasher came out just a touch low here, but effortlessly turns over and holds that turn. While the Z Light Thrasher turned over much faster and kept on turning, it actually catches edge and cut rolls slightly. So far, then, the recycled plastic was a little bit more overstable. Let's see if that trend continues with the Avenger SS. This time we'll be comparing the recycled Avenger SS, rated at 10.5, negative 3.1. We'll be comparing the Avenger SS in recycled ESP and standard premium ESP. Both of these discs are stickered at 164 to 166 grams. And let's take a look at them side by side. From a slight hyzer, the regular ESP Avenger SS turns over hard and fast, burns out at only around 220 feet, while the recycled Avenger SS has just enough stability to hold that turn and continues to cruise well past 380 feet, a significant difference. Two discs down, and surprisingly, the recycled plastic was more overstable, which is definitely not what we were expecting. Let's take a look at our last distance driver, the Scorch. Rated at 11, 6, negative 2, 2, the Scorch is one of the most beginner-friendly drivers in Discraft's lineup. 
The recycled ESP that we're throwing today is 160 to 163 grams, while this regular ESP is 167 to 169. And this time, side by side, there isn't too much to choose between them. Both get a pretty big turn and eventually fade back. But we think the recycled ESP fights out just a little bit faster than the standard ESP. Three for three so far, let's see if the trend continues with the heat. Rated at 9.6, negative 3.1, the heat is a go-to roller disc for bigger arms and a great long-distance fairway driver for slower arm speeds. Our recycled heat is 155 to 159, while our premium ESP heat comes in a bit heavier, 164 to 166. And the recycled heat here flies exactly like you'd expect a heat to, holding a generous turn throughout the flight. However, our ESP heat is quite a bit different. It gets a lot less turn and fades out much earlier for a more overstable flight making that our first recycled disc that wasn't more overstable. Next up, let's see our mid-ranges, beginning with the Meteor. Rated at 5.5, negative 3.1, the Meteor is a popular understable mid-range for both big arms and beginners alike. And for this, of course, we have our recycled ESP Meteor, weighing in at 170 to 172 grams. And alongside it, we have something completely different, the Season 2 Ledgestone UV Glow Meteor, at 175 to 176. And once again, let's see a nice side-by-side -side comparison. The recycled meteor comes out on a mild hyzer angle, flips over, and only holds a minimal turn. Honestly, not very understable for a meteor. While the UV glow meteor only holds that turn briefly before fading out. And honestly, these two meteors were pretty unusual. While these flights that you see looked maybe somewhat normal for a Meteor, it took us five to six throws with each of these and they just wouldn't turn over. And I had to keep telling Caleb to add more power, more power, throw it harder. So these are probably two of the more overstable Meteors that we've ever tested. So if you're looking for a really beefy run of Meteor, maybe you have a much higher arm speed, but you still want a slightly understable mid-range, we would recommend the UV Glow from this season's Ledgestone release and the recycled ESP. So interesting results with the Meteor, but we saved the two fan favorite molds for last. Let's talk about the Buzz. For the Buzz, we have another interesting pairing, putting the recycled ESP Buzz you see here up against a 2024 Chris Dickerson Tour Series Buzz in the new Z-Flex Jawbreaker Plastic. And both of these are max weight. Off the tee, the Tour Series Buzz is exactly what you're looking for in a Buzz. Torque resistant, but straight, and boy does it go far. But how well will the recycled ESP match up? Well, here's two different throws with it to show you what's what. And surprisingly, that recycled ESP is not just more overstable, but quite a bit more. which means only the heat and meteor weren't more overstable. But what about the zone? Well, we're gonna put the zone up against two different plastics, Jawbreaker and X. Jawbreaker is a popular mid-grade plastic that's a little bit softer, typically less overstable and quick to beat in. While the X zone is a softer, rubbery, sort of bouncy premium plastic and is quite tacky and sticky. All three of these zones are 173 to 174 grams. So for our final test, let's see how they fly. The X zone comes out on a slight hyzer, appears to hold that briefly before a generous fade, but actually flew pretty far, around 230 to 250 feet. Next up, the jawbreaker zone, and it flies about that same distance, also just hesitating briefly before fading out. And lastly, the recycled ESP zone, which was, well, I think Caleb said it best. Oh my God, it's beef. Oh my God, it's beef. So going into this test, I think rightly so, we expected recycled plastic to be more understable. That's certainly what we've seen from other brands. 
but I think there may be an upside to this increased stability. You see, in many cases, recycled plastic just isn't as durable as standard premium plastic. And if it isn't as durable, it will likely beat in faster than other plastic blends. Which means just because these recycled discs started out as more overstable doesn't mean that they're going to stay that way. And I think we can also read into the molds that Discraft has made available in this plastic as a little bit of a clue. With the exception of the zone and maybe the buzz, pretty much every single mold available with this plastic is an understable, more beginner-friendly disc. So perhaps Discraft is also expecting these discs to beat in a little more quickly to make them a little more user-friendly. What are your thoughts on recycled plastic? Do you bag any? Tell us about it in the comments below. And also comment below what plastic comparisons we should do in the future. Remember, the plastic is in the details. For Six Sided Discs, I'm Greg. We'll see you in the next one. Um... Personally, we've thrown a lot of different plastic that has rated at 12, 5, negative 3, 2. The Thrasher is a high speed beginner front for making that our first disc. If you like this content and want to see more, please consider liking the video, subscribing to our channel, or supporting us on Patreon. Your support makes this content possible.